Alright, what's up guys, this is Spooky, and this is the first video of uh, Let's Play Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. Anyway, this is a new little project that I'm working on, hopefully you guys like it. Um, I'm sure some of you have seen these Let's Plays floating around on YouTube before. A little interesting walkthrough of some OG games. Anyway, this game in particular, Zelda 2, was released in, uh, in Japan in 1987. It came out here in America in 1988, and it's a lot different than the rest of the series in general, especially Zelda 1 and Zelda 3, which are overhead view adventure games. This game's much more, I would say, an ambitious sort of idea. There's a lot of, uh, it's a side-scroller for one, and there are a lot of RPG systems involved. There's leveling, random encounters, stuff like that. Um, this is considered one of the black sheep of the Zelda series, but it's one of my personal favorites to be honest. It's got some cool music and it follows along with the Zelda storyline in general pretty well. Anyway, we're gonna get started. So first off, you get to enter your name. Much like Zelda 1. There's no uh, secrets in this one, so there's no you know put Zelda as your name to get a special second quest or anything like that there you go anyway the storyline for this game uh, involves Zelda getting put to sleep by Ganon's minions the only way that Link can really wake her up is to uh, receive the Triforce of Courage which is the third Triforce it wasn't really talked about in the first game but um of course, Ganon's minions are looking for a way to revive Ganon, and the Triforce is the plan that's involved. Here's the overworld map. You can pretty much travel anywhere. Here on the road, it's safe, but as you see, the second I step into this area, we get a lot of uh, random enemies that pass by and put you in a random encounter. You can see on the top, there's uh, magic and life, and there's also a sword there. Those are for your levels, so everything's level 1 right now for me. And you can see the experience in the top right. Right now I have 4 XP, I need 50 to gain a level. So I'm going to go here to this little tree area. It's not actually where I meant to go, the random encounter just happened to come out at the perfect time. You can actually use random encounters to avoid things that are built into the map. Anyway, the reason why we're going here is because this little experience bonus here. It's perfect. Gives us our first level, which we're going to put into life. Each level has a, a set amount of experience that you have to reach to level up. But that's good. Uh, leveling up life is very, very important. Anyway, before we continue on, we're going to head to this town that's nearby to us. This is the town of, uh, I forget the town names, uh, Raru, okay. Anyway, each town has ways for you to get your life back. There's also these NPCs that really help you out. We're going to avoid most of them though, because most of the information we won't really need. This lady helps you refill your health. You go in the house, you get refilled. We don't really need it right now, but just an idea. There's also... An old lady that can help you restore your magic, but we're looking for something in particular, and that's this girl. All right, so we get to talk with her dad. That's right. It's very true. Each town, there's an old wizard that can teach you a spell. But not everybody teaches you the spells for free. Some of them uh, require you to go on a short quest first. So we get our first spell. And it's a shield spell. Now the way it works, as far as casting spells, is I press start to bring up this little menu. I only have shield, so this is the only spell I can pick. And you press uh, select to activate the spell. Um, each box of magic is 16 points. So shield costs me 32, which means it will cost half of my magic to use it. And what shield does is pretty simple. It uh, doubles your defense, but it only works for one screen. So once you exit to the next screen, the effect is gone. I'm just going to avoid most of these random encounters and just keep it moving. Anyway, our goal right now is going to be to head to palace number one. And I'll explain about the palaces when I get there. 
We need the candle to be able to see in the dark. So that's why it's so black here. So anyway, the the palace that we want is north of us. But before that, I'm gonna head south here, and there's a very specific reason I'm doing that. As you'll see in just a minute, these bubbles can hit you. So you have to be very careful to not, not get knocked into the ocean. If you do, it's instant death. You do get lives in this game though, which helps a little bit. In Zelda 1, of course, one death was it. Not in Zelda 2. Alright, here we go. So we get a heart container, which is pretty useful. Also get some good experience taking out this guy. Alright, now we're going to head over to our first palace. Now the reason for each particular palace is that Link is given uh, these six crystals. You can see them here in my menu. Um, you can also see how many keys you have on screen and how many uh, extra lives we have left. Uh, speaking of which, we just lost a life. So we got two spookies left. Some of these areas are really tricky. But anyway, the point is that to, to go into the final dungeon, you will need to uh, put a crystal in each of the previous dungeons because the final dungeon has a big barrier covering it. Similar to Zelda 1 where you needed the whole Triforce just to get into the final dungeon. Here you need to clear each previous palace to get to the next palace, to get to the final palace. So there's seven palaces in total, the six regular ones, and also the Great Palace. Alright, and here we are. This is the first palace. We only have one life left, but this palace is pretty easy. You can control these little elevators. Now we want to go to the right here, but there's a locked door there, so left first. These enemies don't give any experience. If they hit you, they take experience away, which makes them very annoying. There's some skeleton enemies. Yeah! Anyway, if you hit them low, you'll get the kill. This first palace is great for building up early experience. Each dungeon has a boss and also an item. You need both to actually clear the palace completely. That blue bottle that you saw there was a magic refill. We didn't need it though, since we're still full magic right now. And full health for that matter. Anyway, our goal by the end of this palace is to try to not only beat the palace itself, but try to get uh, everything to level 2 if we can. These skull enemies have a lot of health, so I'm just gonna skip it. They hit you, they take your magic also, which is really annoying. Almost out of level. Five more. Alright, so down here is where this palace's item is, but we need more keys first, so we're gonna keep going. There we go, we got another level. The max level for each. Uh, for each stat is level 8. And as you can imagine, level 8 and everything is pretty sick. You take very little damage from most enemies. You deal a lot of damage, and your magic costs almost nothing. That's how it works. Each level in life, of course, makes your defense better. Each level in attack doubles your attack. 8 times, you can imagine how good that becomes. And each level in magic makes your spells cost less magic points. These weird enemies just chucking stuff. Alright, we got him. Now we got a key. Here we got a potion. 
Oh yeah, you can see since we got a level in magic, shield doesn't cost uh, 32 points anymore. It now costs 24. Good to know, right? So now let's go back to where that item was sitting. Just gonna let that guy do his thing. Ah, uh, that was crazy, right? Look how fast that guy is. He's just going nuts. X Factor. Still gotta be careful. The good news is if I get to 150 XP, I will get refilled. Which is very important. I'm gonna take that potion. Let's see if I can get this without messing up. Yes, nice. There we go. Got our health back. couple of tough enemies in this area. It's this guy, which has a lot of health. There's also uh, Iron Knuckle back here, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, nice. Oh, great, we got another level. Good work. There he is. So, there's an easy way to beat these guys. They do like to block your attacks, but if you jump, it tends to confuse them. It makes it a lot easier, as you see. Get our first item, the candle. It's very important because now we can see in the dark there are a lot of caves in this game, and some you have to travel through to proceed further into the game world. So, being able to see sounds pretty nice to me. You still take two hits to kill, surprisingly. But we're doing pretty good so far in our first dungeon. We gained a lot of levels. Just doing that to stop that guy from catching up. Alright, and with the project of getting our first item out of the way, it's now our job to finish off this dungeon. Now here's another one of those uh, iron knuckles. Might be able to get another level. We'll see. Here's the last door. Oh, there we go. I'm just gonna try to stay in front of this guy. Got him. Very nice. Actually, I think we will get a level. Alright, so coming up, we're going to have the boss, so I'm going to use my shield spell here just to make it a little easier. Here he is. So this guy's uh, completely armored on the body, which means that we only want to hit the head. He has a lot of health too, he's pretty tough. If he hits you with his mace, does a ton of damage, even with the shield spell on. Almost hit me, <laughs> gotta be careful. That wasn't so bad, actually. Oh, if that was, wow. Like, launched me across the screen. <laughs> so, good job to us, guys. We got the first boss taken out. Now, uh, since we're so close to our next level, I actually want to go back, and I'll tell you the reason for that in a second before I proceed. But, we only need 19 experience to the next level. I'm sure we can find some enemies to get that last little bit of experience before we finish off the dungeon. 
Some enemies don't regenerate, as you see, the Iron Knuckle didn't come back, as well as that other guy that chucks the mace at you, or whatever it is he throws. Same with the Stoutfos that were in this room. So I'm gonna go to one of these skull enemies, because although it takes a while to kill, they're worth good experience. This thing has so much health, look at it. Die already. There we go. Alright, so we get a level in magic. And again, apologies for the detour, but as you'll see, there's a very important reason for it. We did a pretty good job on our first dungeon, I have to say. This is the boss area that we just came from. There are no maps or anything for the dungeons either, so it's all memorization or using an online map. But anyway, I stand here, and one of the crystals gets installed. There you go. So um, every time you beat one of these dungeons, you essentially get a free level, which is pretty useful. Um, one of the things that you want to do is you want to kind of plan when you know, if you if you know you're about to take a crystal, you may want to finish off a level first. That way, you can maximize uh, how much free experience you get from the statue. But anyway, I'm gonna take this life level up. I'm just gonna take the level ups in order from now. You do have the ability to skip and decide that you want to take, for example, a a power level up before a life level up. But that still requires more experience. So anyway, guys, uh, that's it for part one of Let's Play Legend of Zelda 2: Adventure of Link. Hope you guys enjoyed it and expect to see more of it soon. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys later.